Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4 on patch 1.10.1, in which we are playing as, as you can tell from the thumbnail as well as the title, probably, Turkey under Ataturk. So we shall begin, and we're going to leave historical AF focuses on because this is my very first campaign in Battle for the Bosphorus DLC. Bosphorus. Bosphorus. I don't know. Regardless, like normal custom game rules, everything's set to default. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'll be honest. I, I kind of forgot the DLC came out. People were asking me, hey, did you get like content creator keys for the DLC? I'm like, there's DLC coming out? I'll be honest. I like, I always forget to ask for, you know, <laughs> keys for, you know, as a content creator. So I always end up purchasing the DLC like everyone else. Well, like most people, so. I just want to let you know that early on, but it looks like we start with a pretty decent army. Now, this focus tree, I know nothing about. It looks pretty huge. It reminds me of Spain's, which is pretty large. But let us begin. We can start with the lessons learning from the Great War. We could also do a Hava Okulu, and I'll be honest, I know nothing about Turkey, except that it's like in Eurasia. But the Montreux Convention. It is outrageous that despite everything that has happened since the Great War, we are still denied the rights to administer our own straits. Instead of a unilateral seizing of the straits by our military, let us instead try a more deft diplomatic maneuver so that we can escape this crisis without becoming Europe's new pariah. Cool, we get the Montreux Division. Call a convention announcing our intention to remilitarize the Dardanelles and the Bosporus Strait. Oh, it's Bosporus. We should be prepared for a potential backlash from the Soviet Union. Okay, so be it, whatever. Let's get some production, because why not? And then we'll probably also get some construction. Well, Uno! Followed up with some research speed and an electronic mechanical engineering. Now, with Turkey here, uh, we're going to build up this area and then Bursa. Uh, we'll go to Malatya. Malatya. And then, oh, Trebizond's 40% infrastructure. Not great, not bad. We have four military factories. Okay, then. Let's see. Want some artillery? We can lower that by one. We got to get some light tanks and grab some casts because I like casts. Over here, let's see, ship-wise, this, oh my goodness. Oh, what is that thing you call when you don't like stuff? Oh, this looks like garbage. Destroyers, coastal defensive ships, is this an old heavy cruiser? It's an old light cruiser, which uh, might be okay. How is this ca uh, capital ship, early battleship? It's, uh, oh no, oh no. Also, uh, the mods I'm using are none. At the time of this recording, they, I, none of the mods work, except for the Thousand Week Reich. Which is kind of weird, but whatever. Who is this? Kamala's Champion. Army Reassignment stuff. Level 2, 2, 3. I like level 3. Mehmet Ali Elgan. Production costs. Sure, why not? I'm going to se separate you because that makes no sense why you should be with that group. Personality, speed, and damage is not bad. Go use you. Cool. Train. Do that. Train. In the meantime. I'm just gonna use convoys. That's fine with me. Cool. And I guess before we do that, let's see. Air Force. Do we have an Air Force? We've got a total of a few planes. Let's see. You are fighters and you are cast. Yeah. Great. 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 Let's begin. Just because it's gonna take a whole 70 days for us to get the next focus done. Or the first focus. Kurdistan is not core, which is over here. Oh, uh, why do the Kurds have to be so rebellious? Why? Let's see. What are we using? Oh, our fuel's going down. We're going to need more division. So let's go ahead and train Dog to Guy. Piyad too many? Eh, that's not too bad. Let's get three divisions of that going. And Ankara, that'd be very nice. We have our own garrison divisions here, which are not bad. And we have some light tank divisions, which uh, have some armor on them. And a recon company, so that's not too bad. We're going to get how much political power day? 0.97. That's not too bad either. Let's see. Fuel is going down and bye bye. God, it's, it's so bad when I don't use colored buttons. I missed that mod. Color events should be pretty good as well, but whatever. You know what, for now, how about we stop training you guys? Just go home, because we're running out of fuel already. Wowzers. Let's see. With this army, we have some... I don't know. Who are these? Oh, garrison divisions. Hmm. Yeah, no. I'm going to use you for my normal army, so that means you got to be like this. we going to need a lot of infantry equipment. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys... Just in case I put 18 guys against the Soviets, I think that'd be pretty okay to do. And you should be led by... Ooh! More attack, cavalry leader. 
Kamal's champion. Let's go with Kazim. Ka Kazim? Kazim? He's level 5 attack, though, the top guy is. Let's see. Kazim Orbay. Orbay? Infantry expert, absolutely. Once we have enough command power, of course. And, but we only have 5% war support. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got some really bad national spirits, too. This is my, this, I'll be honest, this is my, literally my first campaign playing as Turkey. I've never played Turkey. I literally downloaded the DLC like an hour before I started recording this, so. The United Kingdom loans its support, though. Stanley Baldwin has issued a statement explaining that the United Kingdom intends to support us in our goal of seizing back control of our own straits. Winning the support of the UK is a great victory for us and does much to bolster our legitimacy across the world. Now we await the response of the Soviet Union. Cool. Remilitarization of the Rhineland. Awesome. Well, maybe not awesome, but okay. Simil Kahit Toydemir. I want to use this guy because he's level 5 attack, but he's got infantry officer. But you can always learn how to be an infantry officer, so let's go use you. Montreal Convention. Now, we already have to make decisions here. My goal is to come down to do the Guardians of Kamalism. We could go, you know, pretty fascist and stuff with the reinvigorate Turkish nationalism. Is that the way to go fascist? Maybe not. Which way is it go fascist? Oh, Kamalism and the modern movements over here. I'll be honest, I have no idea. Rehabilitate the Kadro movement. But that looks like it's more for communism, maybe, to a degree. Yeah, daily communism and fascism support. I don't know if we really want to go fascist. I am not going to be reviving the Ottoman Empire, so pivot to the past. We're kind of okay. We don't want to do that. We'll probably go with reconfigure the Turkish foreign policy. We don't really want to become communist at all, so it's not really our goal. Yeah, no. And we're not going to form the Balkan Pact just because I've been recommended not to do so. So we'll reconfigure Turkish foreign policy. And we're going to go with this path right here. So it'll be a little different than what I think it is. Fully integrate the bank. Mm, we'll go with continue the policy of etatism. Ismet Onu and a group of fellow left-wing ministers are in favor of pivoting our economic policy away from laissez-faire liberalism towards a uniquely Turkish state-managed economy. Etatism, like Kemalism, represents a perfect fusion of left-wing and right-wing ideologies into something even greater which serves the Turkish people best. Now, I'll be honest here, if I'm not choosing the way that you guys want me to, don't worry, I'll be playing Turkey probably as well as probably Greece and Bulgaria and maybe even Yugoslavia to a degree at the time of this recording because none of the other mods work. So we'll see what happens. But the USSR opposes our remilitarization of the Straits. Officials representing the USSR have stated in a very clear term that they find our unilateral seizing of the Turkish Straits to be unlawful and that they intend to take extreme measures to re reverse our decision. Despite being pressed by our diplomats, the Soviet officials refused to re rule out a military intervention into Turkey to enforce their will. Maintaining this current status quo oh, is unthinkable, and even the Soviet Union must truly understand this. If we offer a compromise solution that offers free access to all the countries of the Black Sea, then the Soviet Union will have no choice but to accept our offer unless they wish to become the pariah of the world. We shall offer compromise. Demand the right to regulate all naval traffic. Well, we shall offer compromise for now, just so that we stay mostly peaceful. And with the Kurds, they're causing problems here. Hmm... The Kurds will increase the intensity of the resistance towards the government in Derabakir. Yeah, so I apologize if I'm not saying things correctly, because I don't know Turkish at all. Oh my goodness. Electronic mechanical engineering, great. Let's grab some more research speed with mechanical computing, because that's always nice to grab. Let's see. We could always grab some naval stuff. The Kok Tikaret AS. Mmm. More speed, less range. Mmm, that's not really good. And there goes Ethiopia. I should have got involved to get some more strength, but we already don't have enough. Kakmok? Kakmok? Desert Fox? I guess we'll use you first. Cool. And initiate counter fundamentalist operations. So we want to get rid of all a lot of the influence that the traditionalists have within Turkey. At least that's the way we want to go for this campaign. So we could do that. We get 0.97, and I know a lot of people don't some people don't like it when I choose selling recourse, but since he's got 30 minus 30% cost and we get so that we get a total of 1.25 political power a day the extra 0.28 political power every day will eventually be pretty much worth it in my opinion because of how long we're going to play this campaign now let's grab just some dispersed industry because we can nice so here are the national spirits we have kamal's officers we get lose army xp gain get more stability planning max planning the second london naval treaty signed more money for the army then we also have sectarian woes, we lose stability and war support. Turkey's internal divisions are represented geographically through state modifiers. The Kamals can be found in the west and the north. The religious traditionals can be found in the center hinterlands as well as the south. While the Kurdish people can be found in the southeast of the nation. Interactions with the different factions can be accessed through different through the decisions tab as well as through some focus effects and event options. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a sneeze. Continue the poly of etatism. 
and now we shall ratify the six arrows. The six arrows symbolize the six fundamental pillars of Kamalism, and our ratification of these principles into Turkey's national constitution will surely do a great deal to aid us in our mission of entrenching Kamalist, Kamalist values across all of Turkey, in which we lock law number 3115 decisions. 3115. Now we also have disorganized armed forces, which hurts our fleet coordination, division speed, organization, air accidents chance goes up, we lose war support, and we require more training time while we have less minimum training levels. Okay, so be it. And now we just got etatism, so less consumer goods factories, more infrastructure, military factories, civilian factory, and dockyard construction speed. If we advance our economy of law, then we should be prepared for friction to develop between our incompatible economic models. Ooh, it has elements of British liberalism, Italian corporatism, and Soviet central planning. It is the ultimate synthesis of an economic model and crowning jewel of the Kamala system. Man, this is getting wild. I, mm, I just play I play 4 online, man. I don't know. Radio, we could do that. We should do that. Battleships. Ooh, i got to start thinking about a navy now. Because do we focus on carriers or do we focus on battleships? Or should we take the alternative route and focus on battle cruisers? But we're, if we focus on battleships, we got to remember, floating fortresses, that this gives you capital ship organization, or just battleship organization, not battle cruiser. So that's worth keeping in mind. You get a little more battleship... Ooh, I love battle... Those are battle cruisers. Yeah, battle cruisers, I love those things. But you don't get a lot of... As many benefits. Now, 20 organization, that ain't bad, man. So let's go with... Oh, I want carriers. I do. Battleships, though. I'm going to go with battleships. Heavy ship hull. It's probably a bad idea, but you know what? Screw it. We're doing it. We're going to make some thick Turkish Kemalist battleships. We're going to have a big old navy, because this focus tree, it's kind of wild. Not going to lie, it's kind of wild. Because when we get down here, we all can all the way go down to Misaki uh, Mili. So Turkey demands return of the 1920s border, in which we can set our own, create our own faction. So... Even if we might even ally or join the Axis, or even the Mediterranean Entente. Which we probably won't happen since... Oh wait, we can create our, oh, we can create our own faction. I thought we'd join Italy. No, yeah, Jer Turkey invites us to... Okay. We can join the Axis or the Mediterranean Entente. Which I don't know which one I want to do. Maybe I'll let it, leave, it, leave it up to you guys. Should we do the Mediterranean Entente? Or join the Axis? I'm okay with either one. I'm thinking we might join the Axis first, but at the same time... I don't think we want Germany to get too strong. Ooh, traditionalist infiltration crisis. The 59% chance of the traditionalists shall cease all rhetoric against the government in Antalya and I'll urge active cooperation. 40% chance that the traditionalists will increase the intensity of the resistance towards the government in Antalya. Initiate counter-fundamentalist operations? That seems like a, that's probably a good thing to do. I'm not too worried about this. Thwarting traditionalist infiltration attempts. Ooh. We must not allow those who would undermine this nation's secularism to spread into the West unchecked. We have a duty to stop them. And there goes Spain. Can I actually help out Spain in this timeline? No. We're not allowed to send volunteers, and world tension is not high enough. Hmm. There are those in this country who are not fully prepared to see the role of religion so abruptly change in the Turkish nation. These individuals require a soft touch, although they cannot be allowed to block our march towards progress. I kind of want to do that just to see what happens. I mean, there's a pretty good chance it will co cooperate more, so we'll try that. Traditionalist infiltration. And that's why I got more political power just in case, so that we can do options like this that we need to. And th thwart traditionalist infiltration attempts. Cool. And we've added to Turkey here. Plus 30% stability. The cost for ministers and stuff, it just goes way down. Ratify the six arrows, great. And now we shall we could do the Sun Yalisir, the Treaty of Asadabat, which doesn't look too bad, peace at home, in which we can initiate counter fundamentalist operations and offer conscription exemptions to Kurdish groups, or revive Turkish revolutionism. Now I'm gonna be taking this path twice, probably eventually. Actually maybe three times, because you have two one path here, second path here for fascists. And then you can do reinvigorate Turkish nationalism down this way, which you can get feminist ultra nationalists, two percent more population, lose stability, get more war support, which sounds absolutely wild. Ooh. But I want to get the guardians of Kamalism in this one. So peace at home. Our potential enemies will pounce upon us the moment they sense weakness inside of us. It is paramount responsibility of all Turkish administrations to secure the well-being and internal stability of the state. When we have peace at home, we can aspire for peace in the world.
Well, with whatever way we're going, of course. So now, thwarting traditional infiltration attempts. Add 30 days to their mission. Which, is that really worth it? Because how do we thwart this? I believe that as long as we can get down to the Guardians of Kamalism, we can entrench Kamalism in the state. So let them do whatever they want for now. I want to save up political power so we can spend like 100 political power to kind of to remove them. And we can do a law, this law. The six guiding principles of Turkey have been codified into our constitution. And as long as we honor them, we must believe that our nation will never be torn apart from the inside. Games of the 11th Olympiad, the games are concluded. We can do republicanism, more weekly stability, which isn't bad. And daily support for unaligned, which we are unaligned right now under Ataturk. We can also do secularism. Which gives us... Ooh. Kamal shall overtake as uncontested administrators of the state. Or... The traditionalists will cooperate more with the government. Populism, which gives you more political power, weekly manpower, and mobilization speed. Nationalism, which gives you more weekly war support, which isn't bad, but that's like 8% more. Etatism. Ooh, the benefits of operating command economies that of the executive retain some considerable influence over the direction of the economy through fiscal mechanisms. It would be in the national interest to revoke the mechanisms now. But we lose... Wow, that's a lot of political power you lose. And reformism, which you get more daily political power, plus 50%, and more daily democracy support, which we do not want, but the Turkish state railways. Without the intervention of the state, our country will permanently remain a desperate nation of rich and urban cities in the west and decentralized tribes in the east. By connecting our nation together with infrastructure, we bring the entirety of Turkey into the 20th century, not just for our wealthy coastal cities bordering the Aegean Sea. Ooh, not bad, not bad. More infrastructure construction speed and add more infrastructure, period. Good. Offer conscription exemptions to the Kurdish groups. Many Kurdish groups do not demand full independence. No strict recognition for a degree of autonomy. We can provide a small degree of autonomy in the name of making peace by offering widespread conscription exemptions. So we get recruitable population factor minus 85% for Ezrum, and the Kurdish state will lose its state modifiers to become a core of Turkey. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Ezrum, which one is which one is that one? Oh, it's over here. So this one gets a little modifier, which we lose 85% of recruitable population. That really doesn't sound nice, but let's grab some radio now for more reinforce rate. Should we do that? But we do get a core stuff, right? I mean, the Kurdish state will lose its modifier, so that specific state becomes a core. And we don't get any more hits to, like, resistance and stuff like that, which is not bad to do. And that's doing climb belt armor schemes, because right now we could throw on someone else here. Oh, throw a nationalist. That person must be a person in real life, because that seems kind of wild. This is a lot of wild stuff around here. Ooh, revolutionary author. I gotta play as communist Turkey someday. I'll, I, I will, I promise you that. Just gotta remind me, can only have one prime minister. Wow. Operative slots, huh? Cool. Let's see. And we can't change this, because we need more war support, and our national focus kind of hurts us. Or our national spirit, I should really say, not national focus. So... Offer conscription exemptions? Is that the only way to put down the resistance? Actually, ooh. Come to the rebels here. The rebels in this place are usually a little more organized than they are in the other states, and they're significantly harder to root out due to the many mountains and hills. If we select that, there's a 45% chance of rebels successfully countered in Hakari. We get more compliance and less resistance. Rebels defeat our forces. We lose compliance. And we... Ooh. Why well, don't we just core it? Yeah, that, that seems like the better thing to do. Just core it. Oh, we'll get to that later. Light tanks. We are trying to use some light tanks. Let's get some motorized first. That's Without motorized, we won't be able to do a couple things. So, mm, Do we do that? We have... We gotta get this. We gotta get the second five-year plan. We gotta Gardens of Kamalism. So that's about 105 days, which means that's a whole nother 100 political power. So let's go and try this once. And this is for Ezrum, which is right here. So we'll see what happens. So, it became a core. Now, unfortunately, we don't get all that extra manpower, but that means we don't have to spend manpower, waste manpower on resistance. We get the... Well, we could have gotten factories, but whatever. Conscription exemptions granted, minus 85% group of population. Uh, I feel... I, I regret doing that immediately now. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know what? I'd rather not waste manpower trying to core stuff. Eventually, political power means nothing, so I'm not too worried about that. Since we're here, we're still also trying to get some battleships going, so let's see. You guys are done training. It's your turn to train as well. Which shouldn't take too long. You guys are already experienced, or trained at least, so. Oil. Who needed oil? 
The second five-year plan and the first five-year plan was a great success, and so the best government ministers in the country came together and decided that if the first five-year plan was such a success, why not have another? In which we can build civilian factories maybe a little bit faster. We can only have 12 out of 15, which is okay. Not great. It'll work. It'll work. Well, hopefully it'll work. What else do we have here? Republicanism? Secularism? Oh, man. Yeah, I guess we'll keep doing it. Why not? Because I don't think that there's other ways to court. I could be wrong. Like I said, this is my first attempt at playing this, uh, this the latest DLC at the time of this recording, so. More political power, but you lose weekly stability and worse part. Ooh! Ooh! That looks okay. Consumer goods are pretty good to get rid of, so we can have more factories to work with, as well as more political power, which I love, love, love. But that's just me. Initiate counter-fundamentalist operations? I mean, we could. But we're going to need more political power to do such operations. And my goodness, why? Paradox, why? Why do you have so many 70-day focuses? Why? I mean, I get it for, like, gameplay stuff, but, man, I am I am so spoiled with other mods that have 35, even 50, 60-day focuses. I haven't even seen 65-day focuses, but 70? I've seen 100 and 120. I'm sure you have as well, but 70-day focuses. Jeez, come on, man. Why, why do you hurt me like this? Ooh, grand battle plan. We're not going to go down that way. We're probably just going to go, like, the tried and true superior firepower, just, just because. We're probably not going to emphasize tanks too much. We don't have that much. You know, stuff. Oh, Mustafa Kamel Ataturk takes ill. Yesterday, Mustafa Kamel Ataturk was rushed to the hospital in a dire state after collapsing unconscious on his yacht while hosting some old friends. The episode is the latest in a series of very concerning signs that Ataturk's health is rapidly deteriorating, and advisors have privately expressed their concerns that Ataturk is working too hard as the condition becomes progressively more unpredictable. Despite his insistence that everything is fine, the government is taking it upon himself to research the health, or monitor the health, of Ataturk, and is compiling a list of possible measures to take. If Ataturk will not step away from his duties to take care of his ailing constitution, then we may have to consider forcing him to retire so that he can spend his final moments with with his family. We are in a race against time. If we don't touch that, Ataturk doesn't get any more ill. Never mind. The game found it. Okay. So we gotta wait. <laughs> I can't outsmart the game this time. Darn it. When's the last time I used a super heavy battleship hole? It's been too long, really. But happy 1937, my friends. It's gonna be a great year for us. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh my goodness. What happened here? Seek treatment for Ataturk? Oh, is it worth trying to get treatment for him? Oh my goodness, when selected, we lose 30% political power? Oh, no, no, that's... Oh, actually, that really does hurt us. Oh, is there a good chance we could save him? When For 60 days, he loses absentee president, and he loses political power. 120 days added to the mission, his deteriorating health. He'll be less efficient as a leader due to his ailing health. Oh, do I try to save him or not? How old is he? Confront the unfortunate reality that the messianic founding father of the nation may not live to see Turkey endure through the end of the current crisis that faces the world. He's stable. We could retire him immediately, though. Ooh. Ooh. They try more infiltration attempts? Uh, oh, do we try to counter funda initiate counter fundamental operations? Hmm. We're going to be entrenching stuff. We need 100 political power anyways. And we have 8 days. and 35 days, we can do this as well. You know what? Ah. Mm. Mm, I'm not sure. I want to see treatment for him, but still. You know, you know what? Right now, let's try to find treatment for him. Just because... Oh, maybe we'll... Oh, wait. Because I don't want to get hurt by that 30, minus 30% 30 political power. I need that extra political power. So we can do this. The Guardians of Kamalism. Because we need those decisions. Kamalist loyalists entrench Kamalism in the state. The Kamalist officer court can only do so much when it comes to the dissemination of Kamalist ideals to the nation. It is time for the government to take a more pro proactive approach in helping Kamalism win the hearts and minds of the Turkish population. Absolutely. Mmm. I mean, we can always retire him. Or we lose stability, which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, that's fine with me. And we get a choosing his success successor. National spirit, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. More stability, political advisor Goss goes down, but not nearly as much as Ataturk would do. Come on, Ataturk, you gotta hang in there, man. The country needs ya. Kurdish stuff, yeah, we're gonna wait to do that. That doesn't make any sense why we should do that now. Radio, cool, 37. Let's grab some more output, why not? Because we still need way more infantry equipment. And artillery is looking actually okay. Go ahead, guys, and train. I, I should have trained you guys earlier. U10... I don't trust these people around here, especially the Greeks, so we'll see what happens. And we have our more mobile divisions here. Oh, let's see what's going on. 
Republicanism. Mm. Well, let's get through this first and see what we can do with this. Before we spend that 1.3 political power daily gain stuff. Alright, come on, come on. Traditionalist infiltration. God dang traditionalist, man. I swear. Hmm. And there we go. Entrench Kamalism in the state. We must work very hard to ensure that the ideology of Kamalism is entrenched in the hearts of as many people as possible if it is to survive the future. So now that should prevent them from infiltrating in different areas around here, right? At least to a degree. And now we're going to save up for that. So let's do this. More daily political power because we need it right now. And it's going to hurt us a, a, a little bit though. Religious institutions have hard, had it far too good in this country for far too long. Time and time again, religious authorities have sought to undermine this government and its efforts. So now we shall liberate them of their wealth so they can be put to better use. Well, we'll see what happens. Counter-fundamentalist operations, huh? Cooperate more with the government. And Kayseri? Kayseri. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, I don't know if we'll be able to get enough political power. 1.3 day. With the other stuff going on, with this one, I mean, we'll get plus 25% political power. In 30 days, can we get 30? Oh, I don't know if we can get 30. Mmm. Motorized is nice, though. Motorized is very nice. Let's grab support weapons one, just so that we have it. We might want to get some armored vehicles, too, or armored cars, I should say. Mmm. Mmm. If not selected, we lose stability. We're taking it into a palliative care due to its terminal condition. And if we don't select it, we just have to retire him anyways. Oh, we might have to do that anyways. I don't think we'll have enough time. Oh god, they keep spreading around, don't they? Heavy basic batteries, that's nice. We can't do that one yet. Let's grab at least turreted secondary batteries. That'd be good. And Spain is still on fire. That's fine with me. Yeah, 12 days. Oh, we can just barely cut it. We actually will make it. Seek treatment. Oh, we'll see what we can do. If our gods have to survive in the next few years, then it's vital we take some time away from the stressful job of running our nation. We shall send them all across the world to be treated in the most cutting-edge sanatoriums and to unwind in the world's finest resorts. Oh, crap. Wait, no, no. Ooh. Oh. Oh, they announced an alliance. They're preparing for the worst. Okay, cool. Nice. The Pontic Redoubt. Let's go ahead and do this, just so that we can maybe get some factories going. Asterisk has worked tirelessly over the years to cultivate a class of entrepreneurs and industrialists to assist in the modernization of our state. It is time to stop cultivating and start to, to start harvesting. We shall work together to make Turkey a competitive regional power. Oh, please don't tell me this is going to fail. We're seeking treatment now, though. See, wait, do I do that anyways? So, if we do this, or we just don't do anything, we lose 10% stability. And we lose 10% stability anyways, so it's, he's got a deteriorating condition. He'll be taken into palliative care, but I've already sent him away. So, what do you mean we failed? 1.22 is not bad, actually. That's, that's still pretty good. That's actually really still pretty good for, compared to what we had. So, we're going to be looking for treatment for him, so I'm not sure what else to say. Next up, we will entrench Kamalism in the state, just in case, because I want to make sure that we don't pivot to the past. Offer that stuff. Oh, we will repeal the faith tax eventually, too. We get some stability from that. Yeah. Oh, that's why we, we did the faith tax. So we didn't really get hurt too badly when Ataturk is kind of absentee for now. Go figure. Oh, what is this? Is poor? What, what do you mean? We, we, he's going away. He's trying to find doctors. He'll help him. Hmm. What's next? Yeah, seriously. 70 day focuses. Paradox. Come on, man. Come on. I know I don't have a relationship with them, but... Man, 70-day focuses? Really? Really? Go and retire. Or just repair. Not retire. Oh, the, oh, we actually... This is a battle cruiser. It's not even a battle ship. Oh, boy. You're going to get blown up so easily. Well, let's come you guys. Chinese United Front formed an unstable alliance. Oh, I'd love to be able to help out the Chinese. Uh, for this group. The Hindenburg Disaster. Uh, the U.S. Passes Neutrality Act. Halrulal Fisek. Fisek? Fisek. Anything here? Nope. I'm not retiring him. We're seeking treatment for Ataturk. Come on. We've got to find something good for him. Shang-Chi Shang joins the Chinese United Front. So it looks... Okay, that was a little bit of lag there. Like, there's not much else we can really throw on our battleship yet. It's looking like the, it's the best we can do, but we're going to do improved airplane catapults because I like throwing those on my ships because it gives it a little bit more visibility. I want to see what happens. Come on. 
We got we, we can get some good treatment for him. Good treatment. He's got poor health. I mean we can always retire him. That's always an option, but come on, come on, come on. Seek treatment. Oh, 200. 200? Are you kidding me? So, it adds 120 days to mission. Uh, Adderjack will be seen as less efficient when removed. When selected, he gains absentee person. Less efficient as a leader due to his ailing health. We need that much political power? Holy hot gosh darn. 50, uh, 60%, yes. That's too good to pass up, man. I don't care if it's on the coastal region. That, that's just too good to pass up. 1.71, nice. So we gotta use that faith tax as much as possible. We could continue entrenching Kamalism in the state. But, mm, oh, let's, we gotta cooperate with the Dead Council. We gotta get that political power. 100 plus 120, yes, please. In 35 days, yes. When the dust settled after the Great War, the Republic of Turkey remained standing, a free and independent nation. Well, except for the fact that Turkey has inherited, inherited the obscene debt with the Ottoman Empire racked up. And the fact that the same debt is managed overseas by our world have been conquerors. It's not ideal, but we can work together and invent a scenario that benefits all of us. Cool, free trade, huh? Every country with the same original tag as the UK. Trade relation goes up, trade relation goes up. As Italy, France, US. The Dead Council will no longer maintain control over the debt of Turkey. But unfortunately, that's going to conclude today's first episode. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we shall try to help Ataturk and figure out who we might play as next. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.